Hello, and welcome to the first tutorial in a series that's going to cover everything you need to know about rendering inside Keyshot. So let's talk about some of the fundamentals of how Keyshot works. The first thing to note is that Keyshot is an entirely CPU-based, standalone render engine for 3D data. Now since it is CPU-based, this means that you're not dependent on the graphics card at all while using Keyshot. Any 3D data that you have loaded into the scene will be stored in RAM, and all the rendering calculations that occur will occur on the processors. Keyshot will use 100% of all the processors in your machine, and it will use them very efficiently. It's near linear in scale, and what that means is, as you double the amount of processors in your system, you'll double performance and you can cut render time nearly in half. So if you are looking to build a machine or upgrade hardware, the main thing you want to pay attention to for improving performance in Keyshot is the amount of processors that you have. When you want to assign materials to your model, you can do so by opening up the library and going to the materials. Keyshot ships with several materials organized into categories. So let's select plastics and we'll go to metallic plastics and let's drag and drop one out of the library onto the model. As you hover over a part, Keyshot will preview where this material will actually get assigned. It won't assign it until you let go of the left mouse button. If you want to edit any material that's assigned on the model, you can do so by double clicking on it. This will pull up the material properties. Keyshot is very fast and highly interactive, so as you make changes to any parameter in the material, you'll get real-time feedback as to how that change is affecting the look. If you're happy with your change and you want to copy and paste the material to another area on the model, you can do so by pressing shift left click and shift right to paste on another part. Keyshot is fully interactive. As you move around your model, the image will downres, but as soon as you stop moving, the image will calculate and continue to refine itself. It's always working and it's always refining until you pause the interface. If you do need to work in another application, it's generally good practice to press Shift P to pause the interface. And when you're ready to resume your work in Keyshot, uh, you can press Shift P to resume the rendering. This will free up your processors uh, like I said, if you do need to work in another application. Now, another way that Keyshot is, makes creating realistic images so easy is that all the lighting is done using HDRI lighting. HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Image, and it is image-based lighting. What this means is you're not actually placing physical lights in the scene to create your lighting. So, creating realistic lighting is as simple as dragging and dropping an environment into the interface. If I zoom out here, you'll see what's going on. So the car is basically contained inside this sphere, and the sphere has an environment image mapped to it. So all the lighting and reflections is derived from this image. If you want to change your lighting, you can open up the library, go to your environment tab, and drag and drop another environment into the interface. Keyshot ships with several environments that you can choose from, and more are available online on the Keyshot website under the download section. If you want to lighten or darken your environment, you can do so by pressing the up and down arrows, or you can press left and right to adjust your environment brightness in finer increments. If you want to view your model against a solid color, you can go to your project window, and under the environment settings, choose color, and you can set any color you want for your background. When you're happy with your image, you can save out an image at any time by pressing the screenshot button. This will output an image to your Keyshot renderings directory. 
Another method of outputting is by going to the Render tab. And from here you can choose from several different formats such as JPEG, TIFF, EXR, or TIFF32. Here you can also include alpha channels and set a higher resolution than taking screenshots out of the real-time view will be able to give you. So that's a brief overview of working in Keyshot and let's move on to the next tutorial.